My name's Conan, welcome back to Barbarian Builds, and we get another review video because finally Amazon got this to me. So welcome everybody, I would like to finally be able to unbox, a little bit late, but BAR for you all. Um, again, not really the biggest Fortnite fan, but I seem to really be like liking the Fortnite nerf bastards that are coming out at the moment, so we'll open this up, we'll give it a look. But before we start, I do like to apologise. Normally there would be loads of sort of colourful builds and backgrounds. I'm currently moving, so now the room is as bland as my personality, so I'll let it back out. But I promise to try and make this somewhat interesting. Before we start, I would just like to point out how cool that Fortnite Heavy SR looks. I cannot wait for that to come out. Like, I'm not a Fortnite fan, but that just looks awesome. So we've gone right ahead and slipped this thing out of its box. Um, the first thing that came out was obviously this new nice 10 round clip that comes with it and the darts. And probably we won't end up using those darts. Maybe for the review since it comes with it to be fair. But um, buy waffle darts people, they're better. And cheaper. Um, then we have the blaster itself, instructions. Yeah, we don't need those. Uh, and that's it so far. Actually, um, the first thing I want to mention is that this is a very expensive blaster. It cost me £50 off Amazon. And that is... That is pushing it for what is essentially just a strife re well, a raven more specifically, a raven reskin. But we'll go ahead and put the batteries in, it takes four C-type batteries, and then we'll get to actually seeing how it works and seeing how it performs. So the batteries are going to fit nice and snugly underneath the scope, it takes four C-type batteries. For the purpose of this review, this is just a quick note, I will be using just standard shot four alkaline batteries. But I would definitely recommend as like a pro tip, even if you're not a modder, buy yourself rechargeable batteries, especially for sort of the C and the D types, because they get really expensive and you not only save money, you also do get a little bit better performance from the nickel metal hydrate rechargeable batteries. So that's just my pro tip to anyone watching. Right, so we've got the batteries in and we fully loaded the clip. The blaster came with 10 darts, which was actually enough to load it, which is more than you can say for hyper these days. Um, thank you, Hasbro, for actually giving enough ammo to actually fill the blaster. Right, leading in with the front to back overview, we can see we have this foot long cylindrical barrel at the front, the inner diameter of which is actually quite nice and wide, so hopefully it won't cause too much barrel drag, but more about later. It's worth also mentioning that this barrel is fixed in place, there's no attachment pieces on it, and you can't extend this barrel any further. But to be fair, if this barrel isn't long enough for you, I mean, I'm five foot one, and <laughs> even though I don't have compensatory issues that bad. Moving on to the grips, we see we have a nice sort of front foregrip here, again, completely fixed in place. It's nice and firm, which is one sort of nice thing to get onto later in my overall opinion. Then we get to the main grip, and this is where I like to highlight that if you have big hands, I have quite small hands, this is going to be a very, very crammed area for you. It's kind of the perfect size for my hands, but again, I have relatively small hands. It's just something to consider that if you're like a much bigger person, say like six foot tall, this sort of grip might start getting really crampy for you. Also, if you have a much larger scape for even me, the distance sort of between the base of the thumb and the wrist, you might find you're running it into a magazine well, which can be a little bit uncomfortable. Moving on to the scope area, the first thing I'd like to point out is it's actually some really nice detail in the moulding. We've got some sort of like fake kind of adjustment pieces, which really does kind of add to the overall look. It's present on both sides, which is really nice to see from Hasbro. Sadly, another thing to point out though is that although we've got some really nice kind of crosshead clear plastic in the front, it is just a hole at the back. Which is a shame because it does kind of look a little bit cheap, a little bit unfinished. But what is really nice about this scope is we actually have four tactical rails. Now it's the only tactical rails on the entire blaster, but it is nice to have the option there in case you want to add ammo storage, shield, or what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on an extra sight just to see how tall I can make it. <laughs> it's everyone's personal preference. It's nice to have the option there rather than not. And lastly, taking a look at this magazine region, it's definitely a little bit more different from those standard nerf blasters. It's kind of a push up and pull down. It's very similar to any Busby Blasters if you've ever played with any of those. But the message I'm going to send home here is it's very much just kind of, you get used to it. And a couple of times practicing, it'll be completely fine. So please don't like, be turned off this because of like, the bulb up system. If you're worried about reloads, it's honestly, it's a very nice magazine release. It's very slick. And the stock is a nice comfortable stock. It's no kind of soft plastic like you'd normally see. But it's, it's nice and comfortable. It's, I have absolutely no complaints. Which brings me on nicely to the overall ergonomics. The overall ergonomics of this blaster is actually, I personally think, really, really nice. Because the battery tray, which you can see is here, is located right above the handle, it creates a very nice weight balance. Um, it's a very light blaster, you know, it's kind of very easy to maneuver, but it's very deceivingly lightweight because this entire front end is hollow. The only thing I want to bear in mind in terms of kind of like sort of the weight and like sort of using it a lot is that the trigger pull is a lot stiffer 
than like standard Nerf blasters. And I imagine that's just because of the mechanism when we open this up, I'll be able to give you confirmation on that. But I'm likely due to the mechanism having to push a dart from behind. And that means that if you're giving this to a young child, perhaps consider that actually, that constant kind of pulling the trigger might actually get a little bit tiring. It's, it's just not very smooth. So now to talk about performance, and before I get onto the chrono, I would just like to point out that when I was using Elite Darts in this, just playing around, trying to get a feel, I noticed about 1 in 5, 1 in 6 were just spiralling. And I imagine that's just because, you know, it's got such a long barrel, but inner diameter just isn't wide enough. The darts are catching and they're spiralling. So that's a big change to see, but with Elite Darts, it's you know, they're catching, they're spiralling. However, with Waffle Darts, I've had absolutely no issues, it's been absolutely perfectly dead straight the whole time. So I think if you buy this, just bear in mind that if you're using Elite Darts, they might spiral a little bit. Um, in terms of chrono data, if I get my chronograph, we've been averaging about actually 77. I've had some in the 80s, and I've actually had some low 70s. But overall, that's a really, really good chrono average. We're looking at about 70 FPS for the Nerf Elite Standard, and the fact that we're hitting a little bit on the higher end is really, really nice. I imagine that's because we're using more current. We've got sort of four C batteries rather than the typical AA. And I imagine it has put that in to kind of negate the barrel drag, but when using waffle darts, which I've been testing with, significantly less as they fly straighter, so you're getting that really good performance. So the takeaway from performance is performance is really, really good. Again, the only thing to bear in mind is that trigger pull is a little bit. <laughs> I didn't realize it was still loaded, and <laughs> only I could like nearly catch myself. Uh, I need to drop a chronograph there as well. I have absolutely no coordination as a human being. But yeah, as again, takeaways from performance from this blaster is really, really good. This is just a piece for anyone who's maybe looking to modify this in future, or maybe it needs opening for repair. It's a nice simple blaster to open, unlike most Elite Pro 2.0 blasters. It's not just completely clipped together, it's not glued together. Um, it's just worth mentioning that there are a couple clips just in this handle piece here, these two black pieces. But once you pry those off, the rest is just nice, good old classic screws. It's also worth mentioning that this top piece here, and this sort of front barrel piece, just remove out there their own separate pieces. So maybe you want to remove it and make it a bit more shorter, a bit more streamlined. Just save to going at it with a saw. It's much easier to just kind of open something up and remove a piece. Then we're looking at doing a sort of a flywheel mod. Um, the flywheel cage is a standard daybreak cage. Um, those can be printed from Fringiverse if you have your own 3D printer, or you can simply buy it from companies like Out of Darts. I absolutely love Out of Darts, they're quite cheap. So that's probably what I'll do in the future. So yeah, that's kind of all you need to sort of know about trying to get this thing open. Apart from that, it's just a very sort of basic strife free skin. Last little update, looking at that stiff trigger, it's just a really strong return spring. Um, I put a little bit of lubricant on it and it is uh, a lot better. And also you can hear from it revving if I... I changed it out to um, nickel metal hydrate rechargeable batteries and it's a little bit of a performance boost for sort of getting sort of mid-range 80s, getting like 81, 82. So yeah, definitely, if you don't mind the noise, definitely worth it for the slight boost in performance. And now to finish it off on kind of an overall opinion. So from my perspective, which is kind of a small 20 year old, ergonomically, this is very, very comfortable. It's very lightweight, but it sort of the scope's at the perfect height for me. It's, um, it's like actually very comfortable to use, but performance is good, provided, you know, the elite darts are spiraling. I use waffle darts. So from my perspective, this is a really, really good blaster. But I can imagine if you're someone who's really, really tall, this is, going to be really, this is going to be really cramped for you. And I would definitely sort of consider that if you've got big hands and you're worried that this might be cramped, like cramped, perhaps this isn't the blaster for you, something to consider. Also, if you're really, really young or thinking about buying this for someone who's really, really young, Again, kind of wouldn't really recommend it. This trigger pull can be like really, really stiff. And 4C batteries are not the lightest. Although it's a very nicely balanced blaster, it's not the lightest, it is quite large. It's definitely something much larger than something like a Strife or a Raven. So that's definitely something to bear in mind that this is definitely not a blaster for really, really small children, which is a shame because I know Fortnite does tend to appeal to the smaller children. So value for money is what something I really wanted to bring up. So this cost me 50 pounds. And for £50, I've seen sort of regulators going. And not only is this a lot more blaster, it's got a lot more customizability with the attachments, it's got features such as like the select fire for auto. So in terms of actually what you're getting for your money, I would argue that you're not really getting a lot for your money for this. So it's definitely, it's hard to recommend it. It's, 
It's one of those things where if this really appeals to you and like you're kind of of the right size that ergonomically is really nice, definitely pick it up. But for the most people, unless you're, unless you're really, really drawn to this, with its performance of Elite Dart spiraling and with the fact that actually if you're really small or really big, it's not going to really fit you. I can't really recommend everyone go and buy this, but I can't really give you any objective reasons from its performance wise not to buy it. Um, overall, it is a solid product. I am I am happy with it. I'm, I'm looking forward to modifying it. Oh, please, it wasn't loaded that time. Uh, I'm thinking about adding a shell strike underneath or just taking this barrel off completely. Um, so let me know in the comments what you would do to modify this. And I'd say thank you very, very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video, which will be um, a big special. It'll be my Phone Light XC and my Dual Wheel Phone Light RXs. So that should be a really fun video. Thank you very much for watching.